Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on using the Kolmogorov Smirnoff test to test the normality of a dependent variable across all levels of an independent variable. In the data editor here in SPSS, I have three variables. I have an ID variable. There's 120 records in this data set. A treatment variable. This is an independent variable. It has three levels. The first is CBT, or Cognitive Behavior Therapy. The second is psychodynamic therapy, and the third, treatment as usual. And then I have one dependent variable named anxiety, and it is recorded as a continuous variable. So if I want to conduct an ANOVA at this point to see if there are differences between the three levels of the independent variable as measured on the dependent variable, I'm going to want to test the normality of the scores in the anxiety variable and test them at each level of the independent variable treatment. I'm going to use a few methods to examine normality including interpreting the Kolmogorov Smirnoff test. Also the method I'm going to be using will have the levels of the independent variable all displayed in one table. You can use the split file method if you want to see the results in separate tables, and I have a, another video that covers that. So first I'm going to look at the normality of the anxiety variable without considering the levels of the independent variable. So I'm going to go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, and then Explore. And I'm going to move anxiety over to the dependent list, but I'm not going to move treatment over to the factor list yet. Under Statistics, I'm going to leave the descriptives checked off and add outliers. Click Continue. Under Plots, I'm going to uncheck Stem and Leaf, check off Histogram, check off Normality Plots with Tests, click Continue, and I'm going to make no changes under Options. So I'll click OK. And you can see we have 120 records. There are no missing cases. And then I want to examine the skewness and the kurtosis levels to see if they're in line with this variable being normally distributed. Now the interpretation of skewness and kurtosis is just one part of determining normality and there are several sets of guidelines that are used when looking at skewness and kurtosis. One popular guideline is that the absolute value of the skewness statistic cannot exceed one and the absolute value of the kurtosis statistic cannot exceed 2. And another popular guideline is that if we double the standard error, which you see displayed here for skewness, 0.221, that the absolute value of the skewness statistic cannot exceed that value. So we see that the, the standard error for skewness is 0.221, so if we double it, that's 0.442, and the absolute value of the skewness here would be 0.036. So it's well within both of the guidelines. And the same guideline where we double the standard error is used for kurtosis as well. And we can see that the kurtosis value is within that limit as well. So next we have an extreme values table. So you can see we have the highest and lowest. And the superscript A here next to 65 indicates only a partial list of cases with that value are shown in the table of upper extremes. And then we move down to the test of normality. And you can see we have the Kolmogorov Smirnoff and the Shapiro Wilk. I'll be looking here at the Kolmogorov Smirnoff test. It's also referred to as the KS test. And it tests the null hypothesis that in this case the variable anxiety is not different than the normal distribution. So if we're looking for a KS test that indicates that we have met the assumption of normality, we're looking for a non-statistically significant result. We want this variable to be the same as the normal distribution. And in this case, that is the result that we have. 0.2 is greater than 0.05. So we would fail to reject the null hypothesis, and we would assume 
that the variable anxiety is normally distributed. Now again, there are other factors we want to consider, including the skewness and kurtosis, as well as uh, the histogram, the QQ plot, and the box plot. And I'll get to those. So let's take a look at the histogram. We see that just taking a look at it through visual inspection, it does appear to be normally distributed. In the QQ plot, we're looking for these points to be pretty close to the line, and they are. So again, this appears normally distributed. And if we look at the box plot, we're looking for outliers, and we can see there are no outliers here. So now that we've tested the dependent variable without considering the independent variable, let's test the dependent variable across all levels of the independent variable treatment. So go back to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, and Explore, and it's going to save the changes I made to the Explore dialog. So in this case, I just need to take Treatment, move it over to the Factor list, and hit OK. So now that we see we have 40 cases in each of the levels of the independent variable, and we have the dependent variable here, anxiety, and then treatment is listed here. We have CBT, psychodynamic, and treatment as usual, and we can interpret the skewness and kurtosis values individually for each level of the independent variable. And you can see that all three of these are within acceptable range based on the guidelines I indicated earlier. Moving down, we have extreme values now broken down by the independent variable. And then we have the test or normality broken down by each level of the independent variable. So instead of interpreting one statistic for the KS test, we'll interpret three. And we can see that 0.2 for CBT and 0.2 for psychodynamic and 0.08 for treatment as usual would have us fail to reject the null hypothesis in all three cases. And based on this test, we would assume that anxiety is normally distributed across all three levels of the independent variable. But again, we'll have to take a look at the histogram, the QQ plot, and the box plots. The histogram for CBT, upon visual inspection, appears to be normally distributed. Psychodynamic, again, normally distributed and treatment as usual. Similarly, for the QQ plots, the points are on the line or fairly close to the line for CBT, for psychodynamic, and for treatment as usual. And then moving down to the box plots, we have one outlier. You can see here it's case 20, but there's no other outliers. So based on these results, we would assume that the variable anxiety is normally distributed across all three levels of the independent variable treatment. I hope you found this video on interpreting the KS test to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.